dollars a week, 40 hours. So, and there were people that some of the women weren't making that. They weren't making ten dollars. What exactly did you do there? Uh, I did numbered cloth, so we had to. We were making shirts, and we, there was a mistake in a shirt. You had to try to find the material that was close to the color so that the pocket didn't stand out on a shirt or to blend it in with the shirt and uh, marked errors in the, in the material, but did, did every, every little of odd jobs mostly. I was the youngest one there. And, uh, where were you on December 7th, 1941, you heard? I was in college. I was in Middlebury College senior and uh, one of the assistant profs uh, came into the uh, fraternity house and said that uh, the Japanese attacked, that had attacked us and uh, we were very skeptical when we first heard it. How old are you? Let's see. I was 21. Were you drafted into the war, or did you just sign up? Well, in, in those days, why the they had a draft, and they'd gone in, uh, in effect, a couple of years before, and almost everybody knew where they stood. And of course, as soon as the war started, why anybody that was 1A was pretty sure he was going. So I've, I've been 1A with a deferment to finish college. So you did finish college and then you went? What's that? So you finished college and then? No, I signed up in February. Uh, the Marines came up and uh, had a recruiting group, a couple of officers, and they were looking for uh, officer material. And they signed up about five of us uh, February with the idea that we could finish college and then go, but uh, somewhere along the line they uh, got things screwed up and they told me that I was supposed to go in April or May and I went in to see the dean and asked him if I could uh, go home a little early before that. And he said my marks were okay. and. Uh, that uh, I could leave leave school and that he would practically guarantee I'd get my diploma. So uh, I left school in April of 42 and 
got a job pulling gooseberry bushes for the blister rust program, and uh, then uh, I went in the Marine Corps active uh, in June 15th of 42. Where did you go for basic training? Quantico. We, we, uh, the officer school was in Quantico, Quantico at that time. Oh, what state is that? Virginia, south of, south of Washington. Where were you first sent on active duty for your first combat? <laughs> the, we were one of the first group out of the officer's school. And they sent, I think, about 20 of us down to New River, North Carolina. And uh, we had four days from the time we uh, time we uh, got out of, uh, graduated from officer school, we could go home, and within four days we had to report to uh, New River. And so we got to New River on uh, a Thursday, and we checked in, and the agent with a big smile on his face, and he says, well, don't bother to unpack, you're not going to be here long. And so uh, we left on Sunday night. They gave me a platoon of brand new boots out of Paris Island. And uh, we got on the train on Sunday night for the West Coast. So that was quick. And then we were in San Diego at Camp Elliott for about a month while we're getting drawing gear and uh, processing it so and we were the first replacement battalion and we got aboard the ship that was the uh, day star and it was uh, the code name was Hoso Pion. I can remember all this stuff and uh, then we headed for headed for the Pacific. And I think it was about 10 days or two weeks to get to Guam. We, we ended in, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Guam. We, ended in, we went to Samoa. And uh, we were in Samoa. For, and I had joined, we formed an artillery outfit and uh, went to artillery school. And what do you want next? <laughs> Have you read this thing? Oh, most of it. Yeah. What did you do in uh, artillery school? What did you train to work on? Well, we had pack howitzers, and nobody knows what a pack howitzer is now because they, they don't have them. But they they do, do have them right now for ceremonial uh, operation. For instance, uh, we had a dedication out in Hawaii, and uh, they had a battery of pack howitzers and I was enjoyed seeing them and talking to the officer in charge and uh, a pack howitzer is a three about a three inch shell and uh, they were used as mountain guns in the uh, uh, Central America wars where they had the banana wars that was before World War these uh, guns. I have some pictures of them. And you said you went to Guam. What did you do there? Well, no, no, we didn't. I didn't there was a lot between that and Guam. Wow. But uh, we, were, we were in Samoa, and we went from Samoa. <laughs> uh, I stop we went to Samoa down to uh, New Zealand. down in New Zealand for oh, four to six weeks loading ship and unloading ship. We stayed in places like Pui Nui and Hunga Hunga. <laughs> You'd be surprised the names. That you look at a map in New Zealand that these are all these Maori names. Where did you go from there? Well, 
Dallas scene. Then we went up to Guadalcanal, and uh, when we landed, the main fighting was over when we got there, but uh, the Japs were bombing us, and uh, we were in what was called the Coconut Grove, and uh, the in a, in tents. And uh, I remember the first time we got bombed, uh, I, my knees were shaking so hard, and, and pound in the pound in the dirt and uh, the uh, we were whispering to each other how close do you think they are Kraus? well I don't know they're they're about three miles away and I said oh they're a lot closer than that and so the next morning we got up and I guess the nearest bombs to where we were were about five miles away <laughs> and we were whispering, and we didn't want the pilot to hear us. I mean, it was just about as silly as that. But uh, after you got used to it a while, you didn't pay, pay as much attention to it. Was it scary the first time seeing combat? Uh, well, we didn't get to combat that yet. yet. We, wanted, uh, we trained there on Guadalcanal. And uh, then we, we went to Bougainville, and uh, Bougainville is a, about a 150-mile island that's uh, north of the Canal, and all jungle. It, there are not, nothing, na mostly natives in there. We landed in a uh, Empress Augustus Bay, and uh, the uh, thing Landings get mess, messed up, and we were, I was in the third wave with an artillery group that was supposed to find a place for the guns. And uh, uh, the first three waves kind of came in together. They got all messed up, and they didn't land exactly where they were supposed to, but uh, made it out. Of, and the two boats next to us, why uh, we came in and I thought, you, you kind of think, well, this is just kind of like a practice landing. Uh, you're not particularly worried about it until after we got close to shore, I looked around to see where we were going to land. And then the two boats nearest had been hit and <laughs> changed our mind about being easy. And so uh, we got ashore and we didn't have much of a beach for a long time. We, were, we didn't go in very far because the front lines weren't very far in. We could see them, so you could see everybody. But it's hard to describe. I mean, uh, individual things I can tell you about. But. Now, did your basic training help you in jungle warfare? Was that totally different? Well, we were, we were trained for jungle warfare. Samoa was a uh, rough island, and, and uh, they marched us around there. And we did night maneuvers, and it was pretty easy to get mixed up because it was, it was rugged territory. Was there any other, did you see any other combat? Uh, yeah, I went to Guam. Um, we were, uh, well, I don't want to go too much detail, but uh, we were on Bougainville. We were one of the first ones, we were the first ones in and we were the first ones out. And I had saved a, uh, a clean shirt bottom of my pack and so we were going on this LST. We got on the LST and I found a Life magazine that was probably six months old and sat down and just by the time I sat down the LST blew up and he, uh, it, uh, it, was, it was the bow that, uh, where the explosion was and uh, I was back on the stern but I got covered with soot. 
here, here I was just figuring I was really happy I'd been able to go get a get washed up for the first time in a month. And uh, then we had to get another LST and go down. We went back to Guadalcanal then, which we that was usually our training base. We went back and forth to Guadalcanal several times. Uh, what did you do for like entertainment? Well, we played cards, and uh, we'd have a, a uh, cribbage. Uh, most of the guys would play cribbage because they could carry a cribbage board in their hip pocket, and if we had a break and sit down, you could just start playing playing cards. Two guys could play cards or four, and uh, then we'd play uh, poker if we got a chance. Usually we had so many working parties, uh, unloading ship, there was, when we were on Guadalcanal, there, they didn't have any docks, and the uh, LSTs would pull up, and it was just, you know, manpower <laughs> carrying those, carrying the gear out. And, uh, you were always so short-handed why everybody worked, even the, all the junior officers helped out too, uh, lugging stuff out of the hold of the ship. Into the trucks on the beach that went to the wherever they were supposed to be stored. Um, I read in your survey that you were in Okinawa. Um, no. No. Uh, <coughs> I was supposed to go and uh, the uh, uh, I was a uh, liaison officer to regimental to the infantry regiment, and uh, I was assigned to the infantry, the infantry colonel. And uh, the uh, day before we were supposed to go, um, they uh, changed the orders, left me behind, and I'd been overseas at that time uh, almost two and a half years. So, you see, we covered two and a half years there in about five minutes. So, there was more than that happened. And uh, so, uh, uh, at the last minute, they were one officer over uh, strength, and so they uh, sent me to the rare echelon. And the fellow that took my place got killed. You always wondered when these things happen. You wonder, well, what would, wouldn't have happened to me? I would have been somewhere else. I would have, wouldn't have been where he was. But, uh, there were several cases like that. How did you keep in touch with your family when you're out on the island? Did you write letters to them? Oh yeah, we had Gmail, a little uh, short letters that you could uh, both write a note, write letters, short letter, fold up and send them. They, 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 were, they did pretty well with, with their mail, uh, getting back and forth. I have some correspondence with a friend of mine that was in the Air Force. And he wrote to me regularly, and uh, I have some of his letters. What were some of your more memorable memorable moments from the war? Well, I try to think of, uh, the, the, the two things I think of is uh, the, uh, I captured the first chap on Bougainville, and uh, there's, uh, uh, it was a write up in the uh, paper, and my father was uh, working in Newark, New Jersey, and it was in the, uh, on the front page of the uh, Newark Evening News. And they called my father and said, uh, you know, wanted some background on me. And he said, well, you know, is he all right? Is he hurt or anything else? And they said, no, he's all right from the last we knew, we heard of him. And uh, so uh, that was, uh, I, I didn't have a rifle and the Jap had a rifle. I was just absolutely lucky because uh, 
somebody could have shot me instead of anything else, but I, I brought the chap out with the, I had a sergeant and a corporal came in. Uh, when we went over and got him, and uh, we had him in a, we were on a little river, and we were, I was trying to get, to find a place to, where we could get the guns across the river. That's, and when I was paddling down this river, I saw this guy, and I thought he was a CB, so I waved to him. <laughs> And I realized he was a Jap, and then I was trying to get ready to jump out of the boat and start swimming. And uh, but as long as I could see his hands, I wasn't worried. But the thing was worrying me was if he had a couple of buddies out there in the, uh, hiding in the jungle. So I was just absolutely lucky that, that he didn't have anybody and that uh, I could get him out. Do you have any uh, friends that you remember? Would you keep, I mean, do you uh, keep in contact with them now? No. Uh, usually, uh, the officers in the Marine Corps got moved around a lot. They got transferred from different outfits. Although I ended up in, in my the outfit I started, I am in, but I had been changed to, from jobs. And as you got promoted, why you'd get a, uh, another job and so on. And uh, I was, uh, I started out as a forward observer, and then I was a reconnaissance officer. One of the things that I, I sent away for my orders, and you can, you can send it away to Washington and, and get your, uh, get copies of your orders. And so I had sent away for this, and I, I got the thing, I it said, uh, Recruiting officer, and I said, how in the heck did I get rated as a recruiting officer? And so evidently some clerk had, had, was copying some records, and he couldn't spell reconnaissance, and so he wrote me down, and this is when I was over on Guadalcanal, I was a recruiting officer, and I said, you didn't do much recruiting on Guadalcanal, so I thought that was a <laughs> well, that's in my record. I'm a, I'm a, I was a recruiting officer. I'm a kind of uh, How did you feel about Truman dropping the bomb on Japan? Oh, we thought that was the greatest thing in the world. And uh, we, we figured that they would drop some more on it. And, uh, after, after you're in it, why, uh, you don't have any qualms about shooting somebody or Japs were such that you just didn't have any feeling. But uh, most of us knew that we were going to be back there, that uh, the Okinawa was the preliminary. As soon as they got established on Okinawa, they were going to go into Jap, in the Jap, in the Jap, Jap land. And that was going to be a you'd be murder for us because uh, they, they, they were tough. Editors, they would, uh, you know, fight to the last man, woman, and child, and we knew it. And uh, I, I was coming. I left. I left. Uh, well, I got back the day after they dropped the bomb, the 10th of August. The 11th, 11th of August, I got back into San Francisco, and. I figured I'd be home for 90 days, and then I'd be out as a replacement for the, you know, for the Japanese landing. And uh, I was sure of that. I mean, I'm just positive of that. And uh, so there were an awful lot of happy guys when they dropped that bomb. Do you have? How do you feel about the Japanese today? Do you have any ill feelings? No, it, it, it's it, uh, no, I don't. It, Feel any anything bad about them, but uh, when you were in your fighting them, and when uh, I'm sure that if I drew a gun on you and you thought I was going to shoot you, you'd try to shoot me. And uh, it's just a different ball game when you're uh, 
when you're confident. Did you use the GI Bill to further your education? No. No, I, uh, I, I graduated, and right then, see, an awful lot of people came out of the service at the same time. And uh, I knew that to get in to a business college, which was what I was looking at, was I was looking to maybe go to Wharton in Pennsylvania, and so I uh, realized that the competition would be terrific with all these fellows that had graduated when I did, or would be looking for you know, a higher education. My uh, friend, uh, you know, went to law school from when he came out, and uh, uh, it was it was very hard to get into school. My brother had, was in the Marine Corps, and uh, he came out, and uh, he had uh, two years of Newark Engineering College, and it was easy to get in as a junior because uh, they had a lot of vacancies in the junior and senior class, but the freshman class was a tough one to get in. Did you have trouble finding a job? What's that? Did you have trouble finding a job? Yeah, uh, it, 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 the, the situation was kind of bad because salaries had been low before you were in the Depression. And then when you got out, uh, the businesses didn't know what to do because the rules were you were supposed to held jobs for the fellows that were in the service and, and uh, here somebody there maybe four people had been in that job and uh, the uh, businesses were kind of up against it they, they didn't know how to, whether to hire more to hire to fill vacancies or not, or whether they were going to have five guys coming back and wanting their job back. And uh, the, for a while there, there was a, a year or two that were, uh, was uh, uh, kind of hard uh, finding a job. Did you find it a hard transition to go from the Army just to normal everyday life back in the States? Well, my folks thought I did, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, oh, I think we were wound up so tight that when we came home, I, uh, it uh, was a, we thought we were all right. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people didn't think we were, <laughs> that we were so organized. <laughs> Did you receive any medals or anything for your service? Oh, I got a letter of recommendation from uh, uh, Admiral for the flying we did. And, uh, that was one thing we left out. Is I was, uh, when we went to Guam, uh, I had volunteered to be an air observer. Uh, I had gotten my pilot's license while I was in college, and uh, the, uh, they had a vacancy for the uh, Air Observer, and I uh, volunteered, so we were, a fellow by the name of Atkins and I were, <coughs> were uh, transferred onto an aircraft carrier, which Boy, was that great duty after being in the Marine Corps and sleeping on the ground. <laughs> and we had clean sheets and ice cream. And, uh, we lived like uh, kings there for about three, two or three months. And uh, we uh, flew off the carrier. And uh, uh, Guam would be, uh, or it could be 30 to 100 miles away. And uh, we would spot artillery. We spotted uh, the Army 155s, which started na naval gunfire. We, we fired our guns, which were 
packed howitzers. And uh, we, we sure shot a lot of shells, I'll tell you. And uh, that, that was really fun. And, but uh, we'd be up for eight hours a day. We stood behind the pile, which was pretty hot and, and uh, kind of took the dust. Took the water out of you, I'll tell you. We'd be soaking well when we got back. And uh, that was another experience I had. Oh, I was I was really lucky. Things. The first time we uh, we went up on the you know, plane with the carrier, uh, they told you to uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. You lean back as tight tight as you can to the seat, and when that catapult takes you off. It, you know, puts G's against you. And so uh, I was told how to do that. We took off. We flew around for usually four hours looking for Jap subs. Then we came back and here's that little, looks like a postage stamp down there. <laughs> it really explains it. And here's this uh, carrier. You're supposed to drop down and land on that darn thing. So uh, they told me when they landed that I should put my parachute up in front of me and lean my head against it so that I would, because the jolt when you stopped quickly on the carrier. So we came down and all of a sudden there was a bang and I started to straighten up and there was another bang and I started to straighten up and there was another bang. <laughs> and I thought that was standard operating procedure. I'd never been on a carrier before. So we climbed, I start to get out of the plane and two guys in asbestos suits are pulling on me, trying to get me out of there. And I'm, I'm not in no hurry, so I get out and they grab me and start me down that deck. And what had happened was the, the tail hook on the, uh, we were flying uh, TBMs or TBFs, which are uh, torpedo bombers, and we're standing behind the pilot. And they're kind of a slow plane, but they're, they're a really sturdy plane. So anyway, the first bang was the tail hook coming out and dropping on the deck, so that didn't stop us much. So then we went through the barrier, and they had cable oh, about the size of your thumb. And, uh, we cut the cables, and the, the prop cut, cut the cables. That was the second bounce. And the third one, we hit the we hit a plane that was on the edge of the de of the flight deck, and pushed it pushed it halfway over. And we were about 15 foot from going in, into the brink ourselves. And uh, I looked around for the pilot. The pilot's back on the fantail. He knew what had happened when that thing came off. I didn't know. So he ran. He got as far away from that plane as he could because the, uh, uh, about two weeks before, they'd had a similar accident on one of the other small carriers. And uh, they'd uh, lost 10 men because the thing had blown up and, uh, you know, the gas ignited and everybody around there burned up. So the pilot was well aware of it. And of course, from then on, when we landed, I got out of the plane as fast as I could. Uh, Did you ever do any night landing? No. We were spotting artillery. We had to get to it. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. And, yeah. I forgot to ask you earlier what the mood was like during the Army. Well, it depends. Depended. Sometimes it was great, and sometimes it wasn't so great. But uh, uh, well, the, the carrier was the best. We <laughs> we, we enjoyed that. <laughs> then they treated us fine on the carrier because the the officers. I I used to say they had, they hadn't seen any mud marines. They, they 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 wanted to know how it was sleeping in a foxhole. So we could tell them how, we could tell them about that and. Uh, the, uh, the pilots were great to us because we were uh, flying with them. And the, uh, uh, 
Navy officers uh, would take us, make sure we got fed well down in the uh, in their galley, and so uh, that was good duty. Uh, did you ever have a, like a lack of food, a food shortage when you were in combat? No, uh, we we had uh, sea rations, which uh, I'm trying to think of some stew. Ash. What was the other one? Beans. Yeah. And uh, so there were little cans left like that, and uh, you could carry quite a few, few of those. And then we had K rations, which I can't remember what was. They were when we first came, they first came out. We kind of liked them, but we got got. Uh, We would rather have the beans and the hash for breakfast even than, than to have those K rations after you had enough of them because they, they just weren't that great. But uh, for the most part, I can't remember uh, really being awfully hungry, but I'm sure I was hungry at times. Is there anything else that you want to talk about? What's that? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about from your experience during the war? Well, we've kind of bounced around. I'll, I can show you uh, some pictures I've got, and uh, then maybe you have some other questions you might have. I guess that's all the questions I have right now. What? I guess that's all the questions I have right now. All right. I'd like to thank you for allowing us to come to your home and interview you. Well, I, I did give you a copy of that, my memo, which is more detail than that. Actually, I have the copy of it. I believe I have the copy of my car. Yeah. Well, what did I do? Oh, this. Are you running this thing yet? Yeah. Yeah, I'll come over. Oh. Oh. Here, this, these are our artillery officers. That, there's a pack house, or you can't. That's that's a smaller gun, is that isn't that that will fire a lot of shells? I'll oh, tell you. Wow. And uh, did we have wheels on it? We didn't even have. We didn't even have rubber tires. We used to have to drag those things through the wow. sand. They're very heavy. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, those the same guys. This fellow here is, is the mayor, mayor of Penyan, New York, and uh, I corresponded with him, but he's the only one that I know of it. Uh, this was on the carrier, and this fellow here died the next day. He, he uh, cracked up in the water, and he, they couldn't get him out in time, and, uh, coming in for a landing. That's how I used to work. This this was I guess this is my jab, yeah. <laughs> with my brother. I kept telling him not to get in the Marine Corps and he <laughs> he wanted it. <laughs> this is a local fellow that was a good friend of mine. Uh, he looked me up over the... Oh, here's my carrier. This this is where we went through and went through the barrier. And the, 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 they were nice enough to take the pictures and give them to me. So there, there we were. <laughs> so, he, so you can see when we were we went in, went further up there we eat up, eat up that other plane you know so, that's parts flying I'm, I'm sitting right in here see the pilots here and, and there's a small room to sit in here there's a gunner there and then, then there's a gunner down here and a radio operator you know. that those are what TBF TBM and uh, the, this was on a small carrier. This wasn't a big carrier. But uh, now that's Guam. 
and uh, uh, this is a Ghana, which was the principal city of Guam, and uh, you can see how well it was banged up. And this this is uh, the point. This is where the the airport was. And when we came in on those planes, we landed in here, and they were fighting on the end of the on the end of the runway when we landed. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, No, I didn't have much stuff because, well, I lost, I lost a lot of it too. I, I lost here. Well, this is my brother. On, he was on Iwo. Oh, really? I used to kid him about it. The fact he was in the engineers and. Engineers, they, all they did is build bridges and stuff. But his job was to go in with a bayonet looking for mines. <laughs> and I knew it, but I used to kid him that he wasn't doing anything. <laughs> well, then I come home and get an auto, hit on an automobile accident down, down, down in... Virginia, <laughs> and uh, the girl in the other car got killed. Real lucky. Now this this would be a typical gun placement for a pack house. Or you can't you can't see things too much, but but uh, the sandbagged around and the camouflage over the head, and uh, uh, that was probably that was on Bougainville. And uh, this was the article that was in the paper. And uh, uh, no, I guess that's about all. I didn't get any souvenirs. The fellows that got the souvenirs were usually in the rear echelon somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, the, the guys up front, they may have gotten a, a sword or a flag, but uh, carrying all that stuff around, you, if you're fighting, you don't want to be bothered. But <laughs> you start out with it, but you, you, you don't uh, come on. You want to come down to my office a minute? Just uh, sure. a couple of things I have. Sure.